A friend, a socialite, a woman can be a predator too. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're discussing the untold story of Ghislaine Maxwell. I remember seeing her and thinking to myself like, who is that glamorous woman? For this video, we're looking at the life and crimes of Jeffrey Epstein's former accomplice. Have you been following Ghislaine Maxwell's case? Let us know in the comments. The Favorite. Born in France on Christmas Day, 1961, Ghislaine Noël Marion Maxwell was the youngest of nine. As the daughter of British media mogul Robert Maxwell, Ghislaine grew up wealthy in Oxford, England. Her father had a reputation for being a tyrant to anyone and everyone, including his family. However, Ghislaine was reportedly his favorite child. I think she was a little spoiled. I think I, I could see that. After Maxwell purchased the Oxford United Football Club, he gave his daughter the job of director. So at the age of 22, she is now suddenly among the executives at a football club. In January 1991, he also bought the New York Daily News and again made sure Ghislaine had a position. In early November that year, Robert Maxwell was in the Canary Islands on his yacht, named the Lady Ghislaine. His body was found in the sea, and his death was later ruled an accidental drowning in conjunction with a heart attack. A body has been found in the sea off the Canaries. It would appear very much as if it is that of our father. However, Ghislaine believed he had been murdered. Shortly after his death, the Maxwell family came under scrutiny after it was revealed that the publishing tycoon stole over $1 billion of the pension funds at his company, The Mirror Group. The massive empire crumbled, leaving Ghislaine Maxwell and her family disgraced. Now his sons are trying to unravel the web of financial affairs the tycoon left behind. The socialite. After the death of her father and the pension scandal, Ghislaine Maxwell moved to an apartment in New York and reinvented herself, continuing her reputation as a socialite while working in real estate. While it's unclear exactly where, when, and how she met wealthy financier Jeffrey Epstein, the two were seen together beginning in the early 1990s. The newspaper wrote, it is to this man that 30-year-old Ghislaine has turned to ease the heartache of her father's shame. The particulars of their evolving relationship are also mostly unknown, but it's believed they were once romantically linked. There was no reciprocity of romantic feelings. Even though she received a yearly 80,000 pounds from a trust fund, Ghislaine was still living a subjectively less lavish lifestyle than she was accustomed to. That's where Epstein came in. This woman who had lost everything because of a man, her father suddenly had everything because of another man. He provided the level of wealth she desired, and she introduced him to princes, businessmen, and politicians. Their circle included former presidents Bill Clinton and Donald Trump, lawyer Alan Dershowitz, and Maxwell's longtime friend, Prince Andrew. In 2000, she moved from her small apartment into a townhouse near Epstein's mansion. I think she wanted a reason to ground herself in New York, in society, have a purpose there, have a life there. According to people close to them, Ghislaine operated as his assistant of sorts, managing his properties, supervising staff, and making various arrangements. She seemed to like thrive on introducing people. Many referred to her as the lady of the house, though others saw her as more of a facilitator. In a 2003 interview, Epstein called her his, quote, best friend. But she was much more than that. She did say to me, the reason Jeffrey keeps me around is I don't make mistakes. The Madam. Between roughly 1994 and 2004, Ghislaine Maxwell allegedly procured underage girls to be sexually assaulted by Jeffrey Epstein. It's around that time, starting in 1994, that federal prosecutors now say that Maxwell assisted Epstein. She would scout spas, malls, schools, and Central Park, recruiting girls under the guise of job opportunities like modeling and massage therapy. From time to time, I would visit professional spas, I would receive a massage, and if the massage was good, I would ask that man or woman if they did home visits. Victims cited multiple properties where the abuse took place, including New York, a mansion in Palm Springs, a ranch in New Mexico, and his private island. According to witnesses as well as victims, Maxwell often sought out economically disadvantaged girls, visiting places like trailer parks. When I see what I'm looking for, I approach, I make a deal. 
Epstein and Maxwell said they were a couple, which made the girls feel safe around them, especially with a woman present. However, after Maxwell befriended the girls and gained their trust, they were instructed to and often trained how to give Epstein massages, which became sexual. She told me to give Jeffrey what he wants because Jeffrey always gets what he wants. Some claimed Maxwell participated in the assault, both separately and apart from Epstein. They treated these acts as normal, making many girls feel confused about what was happening to them. I freeze. I just, I remember being so confused. In 1995, budding artist Maria Farmer accepted a front desk job at Epstein's New York residence, where she witnessed very young girls coming in and out, some crying. The first time the two assaulted her was in 1996, and that same year, her younger sister Annie was invited to his New Mexico ranch, believing she was attending a student gathering. And what I understood was that Maria had a very wealthy boss and that he might want to help me with school. But she was alone with Maxwell and Epstein, who she claims assaulted her. That year, Maria reported Epstein to both the New York City police and FBI who decided not to take action. So they have known what role Gila and Maxwell played since 1996 when I told them. And I'm so angry because they allowed it to exist for 26 years. In March 2005, a mother found hundreds of dollars with her teenage stepdaughter, who said Epstein paid her for a massage and assaulted her. He basically does this with a lot of teenage girls. Palm Beach police interviewed more underage girls who'd been to the mansion. Fearing that state attorney Barry Krischer would be too lenient, they called in the FBI, who helped compile evidence from dozens of victims. Yet Krischer's grand jury heard evidence from only two, and in 2006, Epstein was charged with a single count of soliciting prostitution, with no mention of minors. I went down to Tidy's room, and there on his dresser was the arrest warrant. South Florida U.S. Attorney Alex Acosta allowed Krischer to negotiate a secret sweetheart deal with Epstein a non-prosecution agreement allowing him to avoid federal charges. I couldn't believe that he got the sweetheart deal. The federal government interviewed at least 40 young girls, but for some reason, the government decided that they were gonna use one case. Epstein's lawyers included the notorious Alan Dershowitz, also known for his roles on the defense teams of O.J. Simpson, Harvey Weinstein, and Donald Trump. He provided the level of wealth she desired, and she introduced Jeffrey Epstein went to jail just before 10 this morning. He pleaded guilty in open court. Epstein only served 13 months of an 18-month sentence in Palm Beach County Jail and was given work release privileges. A few steps, a smile, and a wave to the deputy at the door. We watched Jeffrey Epstein walk out of jail, but only his attorneys heard from him. Epstein faced other lawsuits in the late 2000s, but they were either dismissed or settled out of court. One such lawsuit, filed in 2009 by Virginia Giuffre, then Virginia Roberts, also named Ghislaine Maxwell. Giuffre alleged that when she was a teenager, Maxwell saw her working at Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago Club in Palm Beach and recruited her to give Epstein massages. The case was ultimately settled out of court. Maxwell distanced herself from Epstein, at least in public. In 2012, she founded the Terra Mar Project, a nonprofit oceanic conservation group. The ocean is absolutely vital to all planetary life systems. She even gave a TED Talk and appeared before the United Nations. I just would like to thank you so much, and it's such an honor to be here. In January 2015, Jufre included Maxwell in a civil suit against Epstein for allegedly trafficking her to his powerful friends, including Prince Andrew and Alan Dershowitz. Maxwell denied the allegations and called Jufre a liar, leading to Jufre suing her for defamation in September. It's this case that's considered the beginning of the end for Ghislaine Maxwell. You got no comment at all? I've made a statement, thank you. The criminal. After the media attention surrounding the defamation case, Maxwell wasn't seen or photographed for years. She wasn't on page six anymore. She wasn't at the Met Gala. In 2016, she secretly married tech CEO Scott Borgerson, which even her family didn't know about. Nobody knew it then, but we now know she was married in 2016. However, she was back in the headlines in April 2019 when sisters Maria and Annie Farmer went public with the allegations against Maxwell and Epstein. On July 2nd, a court ordered that documents from Jufre's civil suit be unsealed. 
they included serious evidence against Maxwell, including a photo of both of them with Prince Andrew and written phone messages about scheduling massages. On July 6th, Epstein was arrested for sex trafficking. Multi-millionaire Jeffrey Epstein was arrested Saturday at a New Jersey airport in an undercover operation. A month later, he died in his cell, having apparently taken his own life. It would be months before the FBI announced they were investigating Maxwell as an accomplice, as well as other co-conspirators. There are mounting calls for an investigation. Who's to blame for the system's failure? Ghislaine Maxwell stayed in hiding until officials tracked her down on July 2, 2020, at a secluded home in Bradford, New Hampshire. She was arrested on four charges of conspiracy and the enticement of minors, and two charges of perjury for lying under oath in the 2016 depositions. Today we announce charges against Ghislaine Maxwell for helping Jeffrey Epstein. Her alleged victims reacted with hope, while reactions from former friends were more muted. I just wish her well, frankly. In March 2021, sex trafficking charges were added. Maxwell pleaded not guilty to all charges, but was denied bail multiple times. Glenn Maxwell has pleaded not guilty to all the charges against her. The first trial began on November 29, 2021. A month later, she was found guilty of five out of six trafficking charges. She was given a sentence of 20 years imprisonment that will be served at Tallahassee's Federal Correctional Institute. Glenn Maxwell just got convicted of five of six of the serious counts against her. In August 2022, Maxwell's own lawyer sued her for unpaid legal fees to the tune of $878,000. As of November 2022, Maxwell's perjury trial has not been scheduled. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Maxwell in the media. Several in-depth documentaries have revolved around Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, as well as books, articles, and podcasts. In 2022, the BBC, Paramount Plus, and Stars all released docu-series specifically about Maxwell's privileged upbringing, her enigmatic relationship with Epstein, and the various court proceedings. In November, Netflix launched Ghislaine Maxwell, Filthy Rich, two years after the series focused on Epstein. She fed a monster, you had to kind of be a monster to do it. 